All right, so you've been digging deep into all this HIV vaccine research, huh? Yeah. It's fascinating stuff, and we're talking huge GE potential changes to the landscape. Yeah, absolutely. Of HIV. And I know you're here to find out how close are we to a vaccine and what it could mean for like testing and prevention yes. in the future. Well, you came to the right place. We've got an expert with us today. Right. They've been really synthesizing this mountain of, of research that we have on this topic. So yeah, it's a it's definitely an exciting time to be following this field. Um, yeah, you know we've we've seen decades of dedicated research, and yeah. while HIV continues to present unique challenges, right, there are some really promising advancements happening right now. Yeah, let's unpack that a little bit. So for those who might not be um, super familiar with HIV, could you give us a quick overview of what makes it such a tough target? Yeah, HIV is. Um, a tricky virus, yeah. much more so than most. It has this incredible ability to mutate rapidly, constantly changing its form, right. which makes it difficult for our immune systems to recognize and attack it effectively. Yeah. Um, and, and here's the kicker. It can actually integrate itself into our very DNA, wow. creating these hidden reservoirs where it can lay dormant Oh. and essentially hide from our immune defenses. Like a master of disguise, right. like hiding in plain sight. Exactly. But it's in our own bodies. Right. So it's not just about developing a vaccine that works. It's about developing one that can keep up right. with HIV's like constant evolution. Exactly. And um, to add another layer of complexity, yeah. there are different subtypes of HIV circulating around the world, right. each with its own unique set of characteristics. Yeah. So a truly effective vaccine yeah would need to be this, you know, universal weapon capable of targeting all these variations. That sounds like a very daunting task. It is. But I am sensing a glimmer of optimism here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so has there been any progress in developing vaccines that can, you know, meet these challenges? Absolutely. There have been some uh, significant milestones in HIV vaccine research. Um, back in 2009, the RV144 trial in Thailand provided the first real glimmer of hope. Okay. While it didn't offer complete protection, it did show a modest but significant reduction in HIV infections. So it was like a proof of concept guess, showing that a vaccine is possible. Exactly. And um, while there have been setbacks along the way, right. such as the HVTN702 trial that didn't meet its efficacy goals, okay. each trial, whether successful or not, provides these valuable insights that drive the research forward. Yeah, it's all part of that that scientific process, right? Right. Like, like you learn from every step, even, they the, got it. even the ones that don't quite work out the way you planned. Absolutely. So I'm curious about what's happening now. Yeah. Like what are some of the most exciting breakthroughs on the horizon? I know you've been digging deep yeah. into the research. Um, one of the most promising areas is the development of broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs for short. Okay. Um, these are like BNABs. Okay. Super antibodies. Got it. Capable of recognizing and neutralizing okay. a wide range of HIV strains. So since targeting a specific strain, yeah. these are going after like a fundamental yeah. part of the virus that doesn't change as much. Exactly. Researchers have been studying individuals who've been living with HIV for <laughs> many years, but have naturally developed these BNABs that allow them to control the virus right. without medication. Wow. Imagine harnessing the power of those antibodies in a vaccine. That's incredible. So it's like learning right. from the body's own defense mechanism right. and then like and replicate, replicating like, them yeah. on a larger scale. <laughs> exactly. What else is out there? Um, another approach that's generating a lot of buzz is the development of these mosaic vaccines. Okay. These vaccines essentially combine pieces of different HIV strains okay. into a single vaccine. So it's like creating a really like comprehensive training program. Exactly. The immune system exposing it right. to all these different elements. Precisely. The goal is to prime the immune system to recognize and fight off a broader spectrum of HIV variations. These approaches sound really promising, but I'm also curious about the role of mRNA technology. Yeah. Because we've seen how effective mRNA vaccines can be oh, yeah. against other viruses like COVID-19. Absolutely. Is that technology being applied to HIV as well? It is. Okay. And it holds tremendous potential. The beauty of mRNA vaccines is that they can be rapidly adapted right. to target different strains or subtypes of a virus, which is crucial for a rapidly mutating virus like HIV. So they're like 
um, a more flexible platform than right, traditional okay. VexLand. Exactly. Researchers are exploring ways to use mRNA technology to deliver instructions to our cells, okay. guiding them to produce proteins that can directly target and fight off HIV. Wow. It sounds like we're on the verge of a major breakthrough. Yeah. But let's be realistic here. How close are we really to seeing an effective and widely available HIV vaccine? Well, while we're closer than ever before, mm -hmm. we need to, you know, manage expectations. Sure. These are complex scientific challenges, and it takes time to rigorously test and refine these vaccines oh, cool. to ensure both safety and efficacy. Right. However, there's a palpable sense of optimism in the field. The research is progressing at an incredible pace. Yeah. And we have multiple promising vaccine candidates in various stages of clinical trials. So it's not a matter of if, but when. Yeah. But even with a vaccine on the horizon, I imagine testing will still play a really crucial role. Absolutely. Oh. Regular testing remains crucial yeah. for monitoring the virus in those already living with HIV uh -oh. and for catching any potential breakthrough infections in a post-vaccine world. Why is early detection so critical, especially when it comes to HIV? Because early detection allows individuals to start treatment promptly, which can significantly slow down the progression of the virus and prevent the development of AIDS. Great. It also dramatically reduces the risk of transmitting HIV to others. Early detection is truly a game changer in the fight against HIV. This is all incredibly important information. Yeah. And we've only just scratched the surface. Yeah. So let's take a moment to, like, digest all this before diving even deeper into the world of HIV vaccine breakthroughs in the next part of our deep dive. All right. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. All right. We're back and ready to kind of pick up where we left off oh, yeah. in our exploration of these incredible advances in HIV vaccine research. Right. Um, before we went on break, we were talking about the importance of uh, early HIV detection. Right. I'm curious, with a potential vaccine on the horizon, yeah. why does testing remain so, so vital? That's a great question. Um, it's important to remember that even with a highly effective vaccine, right. it's unlikely to be a 100% guarantee yeah. against HIV infection. Yeah. Think of this way. A vaccine would add a powerful layer of protection to our arsenal, but it wouldn't completely eliminate the need for other prevention strategies. So it's not a replacement for existing methods like pre-EP right. or safe sex practices, but rather like right. a critical addition to our toolkit. Exactly. Vaccines, pre-P condoms, and regular testing all work together to create this comprehensive and robust approach yeah. to HIV prevention. Think of it as a multi-layered shield okay. with each layer strengthening our overall defense. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's about like using every tool at our disposal right. to you know, minimize the risk of infection. Right. Um, but let's circle back to those fascinating breakthroughs that we were discussing earlier. You mentioned these broadly neutralizing antibodies, BNABs, yeah. and their ability to target a wider range of HIV strains. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on what makes them so unique compared to regular antibodies? Yeah, sure. Most antibodies are like specialists, okay. trained to recognize and attack a very specific target on mm. a virus. But BNABs are more like generalists, they can bind to regions on the HIV virus that are essential for its function okay. and are less prone to change, I did. even as the virus mutates. So they're like highly skilled immune cells yeah. that can adapt to HIV's constant shape-shifting. Precisely. And what's really exciting is that researchers are figuring out how to engineer these BNABs to be even more potent and long-lasting. Oh, wow. Some are even being explored as a potential treatment for those already living with HIV. Wow. So they're playing a dual role. Potential prevention through vaccines and potential treatment for existing infections. Yeah. That's remarkable. Yeah, it is. Now, let's talk about mosaic vaccines. Yeah. I find the concept of combining, like, elements from different HIV strains into a single vaccine to be incredibly innovative. Yeah. Can you walk us through how these mosaic vaccines are designed and why this approach is so promising? Um, imagine you're trying to create a universal flu vaccine. Okay. You wouldn't just focus on one strain of the flu. You'd try to incorporate elements right. from multiple strains to provide the broadest protection possible. Yeah. That's the idea behind mosaic vaccines for HIV. So it's about like 
casting a wider net, essentially, Let's to catch them. more of those diverse yeah. right. HIV variations. Exactly. Researchers analyzed the genetic sequences of various HIV strains from around the world, identifying the regions that are most likely to trigger a strong immune response. Okay. Then they pieced together these genetic fragments wow. from different strains to create a mosaic virus, oh. which serves as the blueprint for the vaccine. Like a like a genetic jigsaw puzzle. Yeah. Piecing together the most effective bits exactly. from all these different strains. And the goal is to train the immune system to recognize and attack a wider range of HIV variants. Right. Regardless of which subtype. That's the idea. A person might encounter. It's a really clever approach. Right. It's showing a lot of promise in early stage trials. This is mind blowing stuff. It is. And yep. then there's mRNA technology, which has really just revolutionized vaccine development. Oh, yeah. In recent years, we've all seen how effective mRNA vaccines have been against COVID-19. Absolutely. What makes this technology so well suited for tackling HIV? Um, mRNA vaccines have several advantages Got that it. make them particularly appealing for HIV. First, they're yeah. incredibly versatile. Okay. We can easily modify the mRNA sequence okay. to target specific strains or subtypes of HIV, allowing us to adapt the vaccine as the virus evolves. So they offer a level of flexibility that traditional vaccines simply don't have. Exactly. And they're relatively quick and inexpensive to produce, right. which could make them more accessible to a wider population globally. That's huge. Additionally, mRNA vaccines tend to have a good safety profile. Right. with minimal side effects. So that's like a trifecta of benefits, right? Yes. Adaptability, affordability, right. and yeah. safety. It's no wonder there's so much excitement yes. surrounding mRNA vaccines for HIV. Right, and the research is moving at an incredible pace. We've already seen promising results. Oh. From early clinical trials yeah. using mRNA technology against HIV. So we have BNABs, mosaic vaccines, yeah. and mRNA technology, all pushing the boundaries of HIV vaccine research. Absolutely. It's an incredible time to be witnessing these breakthroughs. Yeah, for sure. But even with all these advancements, it's important to acknowledge that HIV is a formidable adversary. It is. It's been challenging scientists for decades. Right. And it's not going to give up without a fight. That's true. HIV has this remarkable ability to evade our immune systems. Right. And there will always be challenges to overcome. Yeah. But we're getting smarter, we're developing better tools, right. and we're learning more about the virus with each passing day. And we're seeing, like, unprecedented collaboration and investment in HIV research. Oh, yeah. Which is really fueling innovation at an incredible pace. For sure. It feels like we're reaching, like, a tipping point in the fight against HIV. I agree. There's a real sense of momentum building in the field. Yeah. And while we can't predict exactly when we'll have a widely available and effective HIV vaccine, right. it's clear that we're closer than ever before. OK, so we've talked about the science, the breakthroughs, the challenges, and the cautious optimism yeah. surrounding this quest for an HIV vaccine. Right. But I'm also interested in like the bigger picture. Right. Let's shift gears a bit and talk about the potential societal impact of an HIV vaccine. OK. So stay tuned for part three of our deep dive, where we'll explore the potential ripple effects of this, you know, groundbreaking scientific pursuit. All right, so we're back for the final part of our deep dive into the quest for an HIV vaccine. I and we've really like covered a lot of ground here. We have from the inner workings of the virus itself to the incredible scientific advances yeah. that are driving vaccine development. Yeah. Now I kind of want to step back and consider the broader implications. Yeah. Um, you know, we've touched on how a vaccine could revolutionize individual health. Right. But what about its impact on society as a whole? Yeah, a, a successful HIV vaccine wouldn't simply be, you know, a scientific triumph. Yeah. It would be a profound social and cultural game changer. Think about the stigma yeah. that has shrouded HIV AIDS for decades. It's been uh, really disheartening to witness the, right. the fear, the misinformation, yes. the discrimination, yeah. just all woven into like the fabric of how society yeah. has perceived this virus. Precisely. A vaccine could be instrumental in dismantling those um, those harmful narratives yeah. by, uh, by preventing new infections. Mm. We could chip away at the fear and prejudice that have fueled stigma for far too long. It's like uh, stripping away the power that HIV has had to divide us. Yeah, yeah. And creating a space for like 
unity and understanding. Exactly. Yeah. A vaccine could foster greater empathy and compassion, uh, helping to normalize conversations about sexual health and create a more supportive environment for yeah. those living with HIV. Imagine a world where HIV status is no longer a source of shame or fear, but simply a health condition like any other. That's a powerful vision, but I imagine shifting it is. these deeply ingrained like societal attitudes and beliefs won't happen overnight. No, of course not. Social change takes time. Right. However, a vaccine could mark a pivotal turning point, right. you know, a significant shift okay. in how we perceive and discuss HIV AIDS. Yeah. It could open doors right. for more open and honest dialogues, okay. leading to greater acceptance and inclusivity. It's like hitting a reset button on our collective mindset, yeah. paving the way for a more informed and compassionate future. Oh, I like that analogy. And beyond changing hearts and minds, yeah. a vaccine could have a substantial impact right. on um, public health resources and policies. Could you uh, elaborate on that a bit? Sure. Currently, a significant portion of healthcare resources right. are devoted to treating and managing HIV. Yeah. If we can effectively prevent new infections through vaccination, those resources could be redirected towards addressing other pressing health concerns. So it's not just about saving lives. It's also about right. like optimizing the way we use those exactly. resources yeah. to best serve the health needs well, of exactly. the Precisely. Precisely. From a policy perspective, yeah. a vaccine could lead to revisions in laws and regulations okay. that have historically discriminated against people living with HIV. Right. We could see a shift towards more inclusive and equitable healthcare policies, yeah. ensuring everyone has access to the care and support they need. Like a ripple effect with positive change yeah. kind of radiating outwards. That's a great way to put it. Mm. Yeah. But amidst all this optimism, yeah. it's crucial to acknowledge that challenges would inevitably remain. Sure. Ensuring equitable access to the vaccine globally right. would be a major undertaking, right. requiring collaborative efforts to address issues of affordability, yeah. distribution and infrastructure, particularly in low income countries. And of course, the scientific journey wouldn't just end with like the mm. development of a vaccine, mm. HIV is a master of adaptation. It is. So continuous research would be vital Excellent. to monitor for potential mutations and resistance, right. ensuring that the vaccine remains effective over time. Absolutely. Vigilance and ongoing research are essential. Right. But the potential rewards are so profound yeah. that every effort is worthwhile. Right. A world free from the threat of HIV is a goal worth striving for. Absolutely. Yeah. It really does feel like we're like on the cusp of a new era. Yeah. In the fight against HIV. It does. An area where prevention takes center stage. Yeah. Stigma fades. Yeah. And people living with HIV can thrive. Absolutely. Without fear or judgment. It's a future we're actively creating. Uh, thanks to the tireless work of scientists, healthcare professionals, advocates, right. and communities around the world. It's incredible to witness this, like, collective effort. Yeah. Watching science change the world in real time. It's amazing. It's a testament to the power of human ingenuity and compassion. I agree. Yeah. As we wrap up our deep dive. Yeah. I want to leave you with a question to ponder. We've explored the science, the breakthroughs. Right. The societal implications of an HIV vaccine. Absolutely. But, like, beyond the technical aspects. Yeah. What does this potential future mean to you personally? Right. How would it reshape your understanding of HIV AIDS and its impact on the world? Something to think about as we, you know, continue to navigate this extraordinary journey. Very true. This has been an incredibly enlightening conversation. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. And for those listening, remember that knowledge is power, yeah. especially when it comes to your health. Stay curious, stay informed, and stay engaged in this uh, vital conversation. Absolutely. Together we can create a future free from HIV AIDS.